What's up guys and welcome back to another Hollow Fragment video. And in today's video I'm going to be going over two XP farms you can do in the game. One is going to be basically early game because you can go in multiplayer pretty much. I believe multiplayer unlocks as soon as you can uh, finish the tutorial phase up in the hollow area and you can get back to Ark Sophia which is the town. And um, the other one will be late game which will be like whenever you're more geared up because you're going to need higher gear for that one because it's going to be a lot of high level mobs you're going to have to kill for it. So right now we're going to go with the early one which like I said is pretty much whenever you get multiplayer and um, for this one it's going to be going to multiplayer and it doesn't matter like this girl right here uh, it doesn't matter which uh, mission you have selected because you can teleport wherever you want but one thing I will say is I just tested this to see if uh, the difficulty affects the uh, XP you gain from high level mobs. And from what I can tell, it doesn't. Now keep in mind, I just barely tested this on just one enemy. But from what I saw, it didn't do anything. And uh, whenever I was on the normal mode, I got the same XP as I did on death game. And the mob was at least over a hundred levels higher. Uh, compared to its normal mode but it didn't do anything so you don't have to worry about that either so from this girl you're gonna want to make sure your role is attacker because you want as much damage as you can to make this faster and you want to also uh, include members as well um, I'm just going with these right here uh, Straya I would say Straya and Philia I would mean to see, say level up uh, if you're if you're doing this early game because uh, Philia for one you're gonna be having her in the hollow area and it would be good to have her at least have some levels and Straya because in my opinion she is literally the best AI in the game so with that being said for gear I'm literally doing this on an alt account and so I don't have any gear besides the free DLC stuff they give you and if you want to know how to redeem those, you go to your items and you go to the DLC tab and there'll be some of them, you, you won't see them here because I already claimed them, but it'll be like a weapon chest um, and stuff like that. Just click X on each one of these until you can actually use it and it'll give you some of these. So go ahead and equip uh, Yuki's Blade and also the Light Blade Photon because these are pretty much the best ones. Um, Mad Tyrant's alright stat wise. Braveheart for the accuracy boost is not bad, but I would go with Yuki and Light Blade just to get some more damage out there. And then for the armor, I just went with this one because uh, highest defense and it has the dex and accuracy. I went with this one because, well, it's the only one I got. And then I went for the armored boots for the dex and accuracy as well. I have no other rings, no other charms, no waist, no back, no head. That's funny, but um, so with that being said, that's pretty much the setup uh, gear wise. Now skills, the main things you're going to need is it would be good if you can get some attack speed and I would also suggest maybe getting healing circle as well, just in case things get dicey and you need to get a, and you need to use another healing skill. Um, other than that, I would go to the precision tree and get perfect style. This will make it to where as long as this buff is up for its duration, you will not use, uh, you will not be able to miss the enemy. So let's say like on death game, the enemy's level was 200 something and I'm only level 100. Obviously I would not be able to hit it, but if I use perfect style, I cannot miss. This is basically the equivalent of Zen fighter in uh, AL. So this is definitely something you want to use for this. Uh, target sight can also be good as well if you want to. It's just basically a lesser version of perfect style. It'll, it'll increase your accuracy, but it won't make it to where you, you know, hit all the time. And then one final thing I would say is to get this right here, this passive, and make sure whenever you, un whenever you go into this tree, you see that it says E right there on the icon. That means I have it equipped. For passives, you have to manually equip them. So once you get this, make sure you hit X on it. You can't see because I've already got it equipped, but make sure you hit X on it and you activate it. 
And then the other skill you want to get is gain EXP so you can increase the XP that you gain. So with that all the way finally, let's go ahead and go into the area that you can do this at. So from the console room right here, you want to just go to your map. And personally, I go here. Um, I imagine these are not the highest level enemies, but I would say this is at least just like easy to deal with. There's probably some other areas you can go to on the on the map, like I would say um, right over in this area and then this area, because these are basically the in-game hollow area uh, parts here. Is just this little section. But you want to come up here and then this enemy right here. Just pull him. He's level 123. Go ahead and use our buffs. Use XP buff. We'll also use the slowdown buff just to probably give you know, a little proc on that. And basically, just spam your sword skills on him. And as you're doing this, raise your AI and tell them to uh, attack. Because that'll make it to where their action pop up, like where it said buff only, or buff up. When it says like any action down there where Philia's name is, you want to praise that. Even if they don't have a praise button there, you can still praise them to get like a little boost. And what that'll do is reduce your skill time. So your buffs and stuff, they'll come back a lot quicker, your sword skills will come back a lot quicker, all that. But you can see right here, uh, I ended up pulling the aggro from the other enemy, which is not good. He's pretty much uh, ruining this. So there we go, we took out one. And we gained 5,062 XP, which is a lot early game. Keep in mind, that's with the passive XP boost, and that's with the buff XP boost. That's not counting any gear that you can get that boost XP because there are accessories and stuff that can boost your XP and some weapons. But that's also not counting the um, XP potions that you can use because I don't have any of those right now. Since this is just still our early But that is quite a lot and literally two kills will pretty much level me up because let's see right after I get out of the skill. See right there, we're already at 6,000, and so when we kill him again, we should level up. Let me go ahead and use Perfect Style again. And this is also a good way to get some of your proficiency up for your weapons early game. And see right there, we leveled up again. So, this is pretty much the early method. Um, the in-game method is pretty much going to be the same, it's just that you're going to be more geared out and you'll have more buffs and stuff. Uh, one other thing I want to mention is for the AI girls, whenever you can make it to where they can change their armor, I suggest going to the shop and equipping them with like the Rose 90 and uh, the Sleep Time Wear or whatever it's called because uh, they also have an effect to where they boost the XP. So I do suggest putting those on them if you want to bring them in multiplayer and level them up as a well. Um, any kind of gear you can give them for XP if you're late game, but keep in mind you will need have to have a, a high affinity on them to be able to you know change their gears. So, with that being said, I'm going to move over to my main save file so I can show the in-game XP farm method. So I will see you there. Okay, so now that I'm on my main save. I'm going to be showing you pretty much probably the best in-game uh, XP farming method. And I'm doing this on death game because I know I said that the difficulty really doesn't change the amount of XP you get. It technically does. And the only reason is because the higher, the, the closer you get to an enemy's level, the less XP you're going to get. Because I went on normal mode and I killed them and they're close to around my level I believe and I only got 700 XP and that was just and that was with a uh, XP boosting buff but on my main uh, file I do have some equipment that does boost uh, XP uh, I'm also going for like some pure damage I got the gram on because uh, the true strike ability so um, I won't miss and it has some crit rate up which will help a bit um, Shadow Legion code I'm going for um, because of the damage value attack 
there's probably something better here I can put on, but not just rolling with this. Uh, Crimson Gauntlets to ignore their defense. Pretty much needed. Um, Legion Storm boots. Uh, I think they only got this just because it's like the best boots I really got at the moment. Now for rings, I'm using two Clover rings because they both have uh, the XP up modifier. And I'm going with the Experience Charm for the XP. Assassin Shinti because I don't have a belt with XP if it does have one. Mostly going with this because the damage value and uh, the other stats as well. And then the cape for the XP and then for the headpiece I only got these two so I'm just rolling with this one. So the area you want to go to is right over here, Ice Tomb Road. Now keep in mind as well, I do want to recommend before you even do this, you like Shiny Hollow will pretty much get obliterated. Um, so you could technically use this, but I wouldn't. But make sure you have Hyper Armor and Protective Armor. So Hyper Armor is from one of the skill trees, so I'm gonna find it real quick. So right over here in the two-handed axe for bodybuilding, you have Hyper Armor. This will make it to where as long as this buff is active, you will not take damage. So this is very good. This only works on your character, not your AI. Now I'm gonna move on to the other uh, buff as well. Now the other one, Protective Armor, is over here in the One-Handed Club skill tree. I was thinking this one was from Implementations, but I didn't see it there. So it should just be right here, and uh, it makes it to where the entire party takes no damage for a set time. So this will work on you and your AI, and I, and I want to say in multiplayer it works on the outside party maybe. I'm not too sure, I wasn't paying attention to them, but this is another one you want to use. Keep in mind, I would suggest using one of them, and then when the other one runs, whenever it runs out, immediately use the other one because you are going to be getting hit from a lot of enemies. So those are pretty much the things you need. Now let's get up in here and see um, how this is going to go down. I'm pretty sure I'm going to die, but that won't matter. We'll still get the XP. So once we're in here, I'm going to go ahead and buff. I'm going to pretty much go all out. And um, I'm expecting to die up in this, but that won't matter because we'll still get the XP. So I just want to go with skills for, um, for increasing our speed. So then you want to go ahead and go up in this room and pull the aggro. Wait till you pull these last groups right here, then go ahead and use the protective armor, and go ahead and use the R skill. If I was better at chaining these four skills for two hands, this would be a lot more damage I'd be able to pull off, but we'll be able to get some nice damage. Probably at least maybe like two skills or so, hopefully. Just keep telling your teammates to, you know, do their little skills and whatnot and phrasing them as much as you can. You're about to run out. I was able to get it off real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and use XP one. And go back. And right here we're about to kill one of them and we'll see how much we get. So there we go, 5,000 XP. Um, when I tried this earlier I got about 4,000. So even with all this XP gear, we're only getting about a little bit of a thousand more. And that was just off of pretty much one kill. But you can see right there, um, like I said, if you're if you if you're better at chaining the sword skills for a two hand, you'll be able to pull off loads of more damage for this. But two hand is just really nice because you can get a lot more AOE. So you can probably get like a few more kills up in there if you line them up right and they stay in position pretty good but um but yeah that is pretty much the end game uh xp farm right here that i would say is probably the best um, especially once you start to get really high level uh, because there's just so many mobs up in there and that's a lot of xp that you can get if you up the game difficulty um, i would suggest though 
uh, since I did try this with all of this XP gear, um, I would say just stick to using the skill. So use this skill, use the passive, and then if you have a XP potion, use that, because honestly, I don't think it's worth using these. Um, these can be nice though if you're doing like other level ups, you know, you can put these on while you're going through Hollow Area Story and whatnot, uh, just to get, you know, a little bit more XP. But for that farm right there in particular, I don't think I would put these on again because that's a lot of DPS loss. Because when I first tried this to test it again, um, I was doing a lot more damage than uh, what I was doing just now. So I would change these back to DPS and then I would just stick to the buff, passive, and the potion. So, with that being said, I don't think I left anything out. If I did, I would put it in the description or the pinned comment. And yeah, that's going to be it for the two farm, two ways you can farm XP, uh, one being early and then one being late game. These are just two methods that I know there's probably something better out there, maybe, but this is just what I was normally going with, um, you know, early on and then just late game. So with all that being said, that's going to be it for this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.